use integers and addition as um, like a base example here, but in general it means that for all x and y in, and let's say our set is going to be called s today, and our operation is going to be the asterisk, but for all x and y in s, x star y is also going to be in s. So, before all the notation scares you away, this little thingy is for all. So, for all meaning um, any two. So, x and y are just placeholders for elements inside of my set S that I define. Okay, so for all, for every single two, two elements inside of my set S. So, that's what this thingy is, is in star y, whatever that operation may be. In today's case, we're talking about addition. So, for all integers, x star y, whatever that output is, it also must be within my set. So, straight away, for instance, my 2468 case, that is not already not a group because it means for all pairs here and y. So, if I took 4 and 6 and I did it under addition, so it has to be under an operation, but our standard addition, 4 plus 6 is 10, which is not an element in this, so it's already not closed. But for integers, if I take any two integers, defined by what we were saying with our negative, positive, and zero, like our whole numbers, um, we will get uh, another integer under addition. So this is any operation, but for today, that's our example, and that's what this means. And it, these axioms are pretty intuitive as far as the names go, but, um, you know, actually applying it and understanding them is the key, I think. So it stays within my set. The next axiom is associativity. Associativity, associativity. Associativity. Okay, so you might have heard of the associative law or so the law of associativity. <laughs> That's how I've heard it, associativity. But the associative law. Um, wait, now I get associative. Whatever. <laughs> um, in like pre-algebra or algebra, but in this case, if we have three elements now for all x, y, and z in my set S. Um, this is exactly the same as you would see it in pre-algebra um, or algebra, but we're going to generalize it now for operations in, uh, you know, in general. So, x star y star z equals x star y star z. So, it should not matter which one comes first, if you do y and z first, and then do x star of that, or if you do x and y first, and then star z. That should not matter with for a group, okay? So, for integers under addition, it makes sense. For instance, negative 5 plus 2 plus 7, that equals, so that would be negative 5 plus 9, which is positive 4, and that equals negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3 plus 7. That is also positive 4. So the order does not matter um, as far as grouping goes. So that's different than having like x plus y equals y plus x. That's actually different, and we'll mention that. But for associativity, we're talking about which pairs, which group. Um, happens first, and that order should not matter for groups, okay? So, for all x, y, and z in s, so that's the for all again, for all. There's actually only a few um, symbols here, that's why I'm mentioning them, because they look cool, and if you learn them, it looks cool. <laughs> uh, so, the third one is the existence of an identity, so we need some kind of identity element, and we don't actually need to know what that identity element is. We just need to actually show that it exists, and that's it. But usually,
usually when we're working with particular examples we can usually figure out what it is just in context so this identity element um, just says that there exists that's the there exists usually the identity is called an, is called e so there exists an e within the set such that for all x inside of my set x star e equals x and e star x equals x and therefore these two are equal so x star e equals e star x which equal x if that makes sense that's pretty intuitive as well if an identity exists it you know it carries any element to itself under that you have. So, in our addition case with integers, our identity element is zero because any integer plus zero gives you that integer, right? Negative five plus zero is negative five. Ten plus zero is ten, and zero plus ten is also ten. Again, this operation can be generalized to other operations, but in our case with addition and integers, you can see that the identity is going to be zero and it exists. So then the last axiom is invertibility. 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 Um, which means that now that we have an identity element and we know that that exists, an inverse as well within the set. So for all x inside of my set, s, there exists an inverse, and usually we denote that with an x inverse, just standard like f inverse, inverse of a function, that kind of thing. So not necessarily the reciprocal, this is our inverse notation. So there exists an inverse within s, and to know that it's an inverse, it basically undoes our element. So x with our operation of the inverse should give me e, the identity e, and the other way around as well, x inverse um, star under the operation um, with x it should also give me e, so therefore these two are equal. So x star x inverse should equal x inverse star x, which both equal e. So in our integers under addition situation, um, the inverse of, you know, 4 would be negative 4 because 4 plus negative 4 equals 0. That's 4 minus 4 is 0. So we're talking again under addition in this case. Um, but we can generalize the operation and the inverse of negative 4 is positive 4 because negative 4 plus positive 4 gives me 0, which we said was our identity for um, this particular group. So, um, again, the invertibility part, we just need to show that it exists, not necessarily know what they all are. Um, okay, cool. So, as long as these four axioms are satisfied, then we have a group. So we just want to define our set of elements with our operation, whether that be as straightforward as literally adding numbers, or if we're talking about rotations, or even just considering moves, twists, and turns when solving a Rubik's Cube, for instance, right? As long as we define our set and operation, as long as we define it in a way that these are true, um, then we have a group, and we can consider how these groups are related if they are. Now, there's another little property just for uh, vocabulary's sake um, that does not have to be satisfied as an axiom, but if it just so happens that the order doesn't matter between two elements, so if x star y equals y star x, um, you might have seen this like 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2 um, from pre-algebra or algebra. That's our commutative property, and in group in group vocabulary, that would be an abelian group if the order does not matter like this. 
guess it's an abelian group or a commutative group and if it does matter um, then it's just non-abelian or non-commutative okay but that's just a property of the group not one of the fundamental axioms okay so non-commutative okay does that make sense so this is just a little vocab word So, from here, I think we will just let this sit for a bit. I think if this is new, this is like, I thought it was super cool to think about things in a new way like this, to just consider what happens um, with each of these situations. So, to even take something as simple as arithmetic and addition um, and think about it more abstractly was very fun. So, I'll let you chew on this if it is new for you. You can always come back and build off of this some more. Take a look at some other specific 